But, yeah, like, I mean, with this stuff that's going on with Iran, like, it's serious. Because, mm. God, there's so many factors. So let's, like, yeah. kind of like running through it again. So we know, I, from most recent news, we know People that... People don't realize how serious it is. Right. We know They're that just... Iran, from most recent news, we know that Iraq wants our boys out of the country. Period. End of discussion. Yeah. Iran yeah, is going they... to retaliate. But there has been recent news that Iran has already attacked two Iraqi military bases that were housing U.S. troops. So, yeah, that was earlier. Yeah, that was earlier. So, the and thing the is, like, I mean, if, and Russia's been dead. Russia's been dead on the subject for the most part. Yeah. They're meeting, they're meeting with Iraqi leader, but it doesn't mean anything. They could just, just trying to get an idea of the situation. Everybody says he's diffusing tensions, but... Well, maybe, he might be. Yeah, but I mean, if he is diffusing tensions, wouldn't you think he'd want to go towards Iran and try to mm -hmm. talk and reason with the leader, or do something with Iraq and Iran? Yeah. I think that. I see that's what I was saying. They're being awfully quiet about it. Usually they're vocal about shit. Yeah. Yet. And, like, but, okay... But, and that goes back to the Cold War... When they quit talking and get secret, it's like a child that's gotten into the cookie jar being quiet. It's like, okay, somebody's up to no good. Right. And you so get that feeling. As a parent, you get that feeling. You know, your kid's up to no good. What the fuck are they doing? They're quiet all of a sudden. Yeah. And, like, okay, if you think about it, U.S. and U.S. is going to call in NATO. That's not going to be hard to understand, especially since Germany, France, and Britain are made public statements about Iran's actions. And so the thing is, like, even if we were to invade and stuff, we would have to clear a good strip along the Gulf of Oman to even Sorry. think about landing, going against A, defenses, and any kind of coastal defenses they would think about. Logistics on that would be fucking awful that I'm not going to go into a fuck ton of details about. Oh, but, I know that's how it is. Hey, that's... It's not very really strategic at all. No, it's it's more of a tactical thing. Strategically because speaking, they're going to have Iran, the high ground per se. Yeah, they're literally going to have the high ground because I mean, of the terrain. You be, you're going to be like in fucking civil war. One boy tried to run up the hill and got his ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> It's not going to work. Yeah, and I mean, like, the biggest thing that scares me is the fact that how what we stumbled upon thinking about in the past, these since 2014, Civil War in Ukraine's been going on. Like, I mean, if the U.S. and NATO is mostly distracted in Iran with a conflict of such a scale, especially with the logistical needs at that, it would not take much. It really wouldn't take much for Russia to have a more direct role but still be passive in the Ukrainian Civil War. Sending military attaches, trainers, arms and equipment. Hell, they could literally be sending fucking military vehicles over there. APCs, mm -hmm. even fucking tanks and aircraft. It would not be hard for the Russians to just supply the rebels and let the rebels take the country. Or at <laughs> least, like I said, going along the Dnipro River which runs from Belarus, a good point in the Belarusian border, all the way down. It curves, of course it curves, but Jeez. it's a natural boundary that links up the Crimean territory to the Belarusian territory. Damn, why aren't you in the military, in military intelligence? Jesus Christ. I don't know. But... Work at the Pentagon and come up with this <laughs> shit. I, it's one of those things I just like thinking. I like theorizing. I love history. Look but it makes sense because, like you said, it takes a Russian to no one. That's mm -hmm. exactly something that I would pull, like in a game or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Now that you explain it, it, yeah. And with all these domino effects, especially with the political turmoil that's going on in the U.S. and stuff... God knows what's going to happen. Like, everybody's always fear-mongering about there's going to be another U.S. Civil War. Well, if we're in an actual conflict, our boys are over there across the sea. These ragtag yeah. militias and 
all these separatist groups and stuff, there ain't gonna have much resistance if our boys are overseas. Yeah, we keep them uh, some here. I mean, it's, it's, uh, well, of course we're going to keep the reserves and the national guard here, but the point still is that our main force is occupied abroad, right. and to bring back a substantial contingent that could actually quell major riots that would actually get ground is a whole nother ball game, especially with logistics trying to keep up now two, possibly multiple fronts. One major front abroad, and now several interchangeable fronts scattered around the U.S. with all these different militia and nationalistic style groups that are hey, rising uh, up. I was trying to explain that earlier to my neighbor. It's not going to be cut and dry like north and south. This is going to be street to street, house to house borders. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a lot of interstate <laughs> fighting. America be... has blended. America has blended. Over each state, past year. each county, each city, each, I mean, down to the fucking street by street, you're going to have borders. This will literally be an inter- A shit show. Yes. And plain, plain and simple is going to be a shit show. But a war like this is going to be literally fucking awful for the U.S., considering there is no defining region. Everybody's going to have their own goals. The U.S. has been blending itself, becoming its supposed own culture. The U.S. is not a culture. The U.S. is not an actual nation. It is an experiment of immigration from oppression that people thought of at the time, and it is built on that for different causes. We started out leaving the British for religious reasons and for taxation reasons. We gained more immigrants based on mistreatment and stuff. The West, or the East Coast, I mean, got a fuck ton of migrants from Ireland, Britain, Germany, partakers in the Great War, partakers in the Irish potato famine and economic crisis. A lot of people fled to the U.S. from Europe from major countries that were suffering from their own government's doings, or from a, in the sense, a leading power's doings. Yeah, get away from it. And the same thing could be said with the West. We had a lot of Japanese and Chinese and Asian immigrants as a whole coming through an Angel Island. The West was settled by Asians. The East was settled by white people. We, in a sense, we brought in, quote-unquote, free labor, which is a terrible term to use, but regardless, it's what it was at the time. We yeah. brought in blacks. Chinese, yeah. too, with Union Pacific, used plenty of Chinese labor. Yeah. And they I mean, paid them next to nothing. Yeah. We brought in all of these peoples, whether directly or indirectly, and over these past years, our nation's only a little over 300 years old. We're a fucking 200. child. Well, 200, but 200. still. We're a fucking child compared to literally any nation aside from the new ones that broke off from, like, Serbia. Like, Kosovo. Yeah, it's a nation yeah. that doesn't even truly exist because nobody fucking says it is. Well, Canada, too, but, you know. Yeah, well, Canada's been a nation without it really being a nation. It's been more of a dominion and stuff. So it's been like a nation, but kind of more of a puppet. But the people and the it's stuff was self-defined. But they're not fucking warmongers like we are. Well, no. They get drug into our shit because we ask them to. Yeah. And if they say no, then they have to deal with us here. So they wouldn't say no. Yeah. They're kind of obligated. Yeah, and like like I stated earlier, with the U.S., if it's going into such a shit show of a civil war, it would not take much for Mexico to come in and take some border territories to kind of bolster their, in the sense, economic failing, considering the fact that the factories and shit they would be taking in Texas, it, let alone it Southern California. It would be California. the cartels taking it when we fucking go. You know what I mean. Yeah. But, like, but yeah. you'd have that, you would have... 
the interstate fighting, if there was defined borders by the time the street-to-street -street fighting would finalize and stuff, it would definitely be the Cal Carolinas, the Dakotas, the Virginias, Ohio and Michigan, if people actually gained traction on that kind of old rivalry. Um, like I said, there's a movement that has been gaining semi-relevance in the modern day with Oregon and Washington uh, forming the country of Cascadia. Um, Canada, in a more defensive posture, would try to save the Alaskan populace and its native and or populace as a whole from falling into anarchy by giving it, in a sense, autonomy under Canadian administration. <coughs> Puerto Rico would declare independence finally and file bankruptcy, considering they fucking them over. Our overseas territories would declare independence or join existing island nations. Islet nations. Europe. Hawaii. Like, this is all, this is all a domino effect. It all boils down to what's going to happen in the Middle East. It's like Hawaii. They would be independent. Hawaii would be independent. I could see them reforming. That's if Japan doesn't come in back over here and try to take them back. Yeah, I don't see that happening. They got their own shit to worry about with China. Well, never know. Since it's a land grab, they might. Or China might get it. Shit. Maybe. I don't know. But It'd be one hell of a strategic point for them. But yeah, like, this is all a domino effect at this point. It all depends on what happens in the Middle East. We go to war, mm -hmm. we bring in NATO, NATO forces, and U.S. forces are now distracted in a major slash semi-major conflict thousands of miles away from their home territories. Russia goes in more directly, per se, into involvement in the Ukrainian war, establishing a buffer zone that would be, in a sense, feasible for bargaining, or if the rebels were to be semi or fully recognized as a nation, they could literally just sign a treaty over saying, hey, Russia, just take us, like they did with Crimea. <laughs> Europe, as well, a whole... Well, they didn't like that shit, did they? Yeah, and same thing with <laughs> Europe. Europe could suffer the same thing with the U.S. There's a lot of independence <laughs> movements with Spain, with Catalonia, Granada, Galicia, the Basque Country. All those people want independence in some form. Catalonia especially is the most peacefully violent one. They're more passive-aggressive. They don't like to actually do violence, but Catalonia is the more prominent because of the fact it's the richest portion of the country. They are pretty much paying for the rest of Spain. And that's why they want independence, because it's like, we're not actually getting what we make. Spain, Spain's going to be a fucking mess if rebels would actually seize the opportunity with the Spanish military contingent of NATO being overseas. On top of that, Britain trying to deal with Brexit if there's a major instance conflicts and stuff that are going on between Russia and Ukraine, U.S. and NATO forces against Iran. Britain would probably just say fuck it and just leave and not really worry about all the paperwork since this has been dragged on for god knows how long with the EU. Scotland would probably try another referendum and stuff and maybe do a more violent approach to leaving Britain because of the fact that they've already tried two or three different times to leave them when it came to the whole EU shit. Thinking about it now, Ireland might try to nick Northern Ireland. Good for them, it's their shit. It is their shit, but at the same time, it's mostly English people that decide to settle and be like, hey... We'll we're stay in Louisiana, and I'm going to take control of this small town I'm in here. Yeah. <laughs> but, I got a plan. I have a fucking bulletproof plan, too. I'm going to fucking get a group together. We're going to fucking just invade Walmart and take it. And everything Walmart behind all the way out here... It's mine. Walmart's going and to I'm going to mark everything up 500% in that fucking store, and I'm going to make a fortune. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Think like, about it. Super Walmart's the perfect thing. They have their own walkie-talkies. You can give your security goons to keep the perimeter secure. They got a tire center. They have a hair care. They got a Subway sandwich. <laughs> I mean, yeah. everything in their vision center. They, all the fucking stuff you can desire that people are going to be trying to uh, flood to to get it last minute when shit's going down. Oh, yeah. 
there's going to be armed security all over that store to make sure you don't steal. Everything's marked up 500%. I make out like a fat cat. <laughs> but, yeah, and of course, is... the fuel center, that's going to be the big one. And then not only that, there's a tractor supply next door. There's some places across the street. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all coming together. It's nice <laughs> when a plan comes together. <laughs> all right, 18 liter. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Right, but I mean, I this grew up is... watching that movie. God damn it! <laughs> I I miss the TV show, but like, yeah, this is <laughs> like I said, this could not be necessarily a world war, like everybody keeps thinking. This could be a war of world or world of war. It just depends on how the cards are played. If yeah. it gets nasty, this is literally yeah. a house of cards. The top starts with Iran. Or actually, no, it's the base. Because I'm dyslexic. Depends on who's got the itchy nuclear trigger finger is what it depends on. Yeah, but that's, if that's, a lot of infighting mm. is happening, who's to say we're actually going to worry about nuking other people? Because keep in mind, this is a domino effect. Mm -hmm. The U.S. and NATO coalition forces moves in on Iran. Russia stays mm -hmm. quiet because they have their interest in reforming the old Tsarist Empire <laughs> territories. They've already got a good economic stranglehold over the Central Asian steppe. It would not take mm -hmm. much to directly supply the rebels in Ukraine with armor and other valuable assets that could benefit them compared to the Ukrainian army itself forming a border region around the Dnieper River, which links the Belarusian and Crimean territories in a smooth border. Not having to deal with a bunch of enclaves and all that shit. Political turmoil in the U.S. and prolonged engagement, more or less, depending on how people actually feel about this, considering the climate we have, but regardless, a prolonged engagement thousands of fucking miles away from U.S. soil, back in the back in the Middle East again, could raise enough dissent to start a civil war based on red flag laws and overseas policing that people are kind of tired of us just meddling in other people's shit. With the U.S. in a sense on the brink of collapse because of such infighting, Nations would seize opportunities to not only nick certain territories of the U.S., but that would literally see the, the dissolution of NATO. The U.S. is literally the backing of NATO, along with its major allies with Germany, France, and uh, Britain, and Europe. Those are the main three that, when it comes to the, NATO, uh, the European part of NATO. With that, with the U.S. gone... NATO forces and U.S. forces still in Iran and the Middle East as a whole, and not in the home territory. Independence movements that have gained good traction over the years could see revolt risk and actual rebel uprisings. Scotland, several regions in Spain, Kosovo, Vojvodina in northern Serbia, Transylvania has been gaining traction in Romania. There has been... Oh, where else... Brittany, I don't know if that's really prominent, but there was a thing in the top left corner of France, in the Brittany region, that used to be owned by Britain back in the 1100s and stuff like that, but I think that's more died out. The principle still stays the same. All of these things could domino effect, and if they do, people always say, oh, we're going to have a third world war. Who's to say we could have the opposite? We can have our first world in war, but it's not a direct war. Everybody's at war with somebody. It's not one amalgamation like the Great I War. I thought that pretty much constitutes a world war, so if everybody's at war with each other. Yeah, they but say. World, a lot of people define world war as a kind of A-B scenario. For instance, mm -hmm. everybody always thought the Cold War was going to spark World War III because it was literally going to be NATO against the Warsaw Pact. World War II had the Axis versus the Allies, and World War I had the Entente against the Central Powers. Right. There's always been two defined sides. This breaks, in the sense, a form of logic and thinking when the world is now on a domino effect. 
and everybody's at war with another party, but there's no defined sides. There's a bunch of micro-conflicts going around here and there. Right. I mean, the U.S., I mean, what's to say all the U.S. bases that are spread around the world? What's to say people just don't take that shit back and take the materials and stuff? You would have valuable armaments and stuff that you could literally reverse engineer and try to re-combat against it. Right. I mean, hell. U.S. falls. North Korea is definitely going after South Korea. Yeah. And whatever else they could grab. God knows what would happen in South America. Argentina no. and Chile still hate each other. Peru and Bolivia still yeah. hate each other. Venezuela. Was, yeah, Venezuela. God knows hey, what would happen to them. this way, you get to become Cuban. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Cuba <laughs> goes under... Cuba goes like and it. takes out Florida. Uh, that'd just be beautiful. <laughs> Cuban Luigi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you like cigars. <laughs> I actually, I've never had a cigar, but I don't care for smoking, so nah. Yeah, I don't smoke. It's not good. Right. Don't vape either. That's worse. Nothing's good nowadays. It's best to just don't even try. Vaping's actually worse. There was a thing on TV where people started getting, like, cancer or something. Vaping now. Already. I don't know. I don't really give a shit. I don't do any of it, so I don't really care for it. Well, I mean, I find it kind of fucking ironic, because five years ago, they said, oh, it's a lot safer than cigarettes. Now, five years later, everybody, people are starting to develop fucking throat cancer and lung cancer and shit. Yeah, we had to have that processing. 50 times faster than cigarettes. Well, yeah, we had to have that processing time for the test, you know? <clears throat> people had to God. test this stuff out in order to feel how dangerous it really is. That goes with literally anything. They legalized pot in uh, Illinois. Does Spark know about that? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, like, this is all just one big domino effect. And if it goes, the whole world's going, but not in the way that people think. Well, it just depends on who's, what cards are played, though, you know? Yep, that's the ultimate turn is what cards are played. The biggest thing going to be is the U.S. actually going to war. Is NATO going to war against another Middle Eastern country? <laughs> Let alone somebody, a nation, keep in mind, that has a fucking hellhole of geography. Yeah. I think that's the main thing that kept the U.S. out in the past. Yeah, well, especially it just, when it came to like the, Yeah, especially when it came to the uranium deal. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, that's a hell of a theory to just kind of spit out after just general conversation. Because when that, what did this even start with? What did we even start with? Was it the plane that got shot down in Iran? Yeah. Yeah, the, the Ukrainian flight that got shot down in Iran. It all started with that, and it just. I was that, and I literally got. <laughs> I was checking my email. That's why I said, "Did you see this?" And I had a link. Somebody had recorded that message on YouTube. Yeah. I was like, why is this fucking delayed? <laughs> but yeah, like, right. it's amazing. It's amazing to just, like, something so small, and all of a sudden you just start thinking about different alternatives and on one subject, and ideas start popping in your head. I don't think a lot of people... I think people are too focused on Iran, and nobody's focused on the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Nobody's focused on the past. Nobody's focused on other parts of the world as well. Everybody's focused on the focal point. <clears throat> Which, I mean, focusing on the focal point is alright. You don't want to really disregard it, but at the same time. What repercussions can this focal point actually have when it comes we, to a rippling effect? We also have a baboon in chief, to keep that in mind. Um, this man... <clears throat> <laughs> we could have well, had worse. Better than what we had before. But. I mean, all of it's up to conjecture. Launching a major fucking strike, but using a battlefield nuke or something, I could see him doing. Just because terrain becomes a fucking issue. 
Nothing like that's the way we fucking thinks. Okay, well, we can't get over here. They have the high grounds. Let's fucking nuke them with a little bitty. Yeah, that tactical that would set nukes off do not exist. Thing. Well, small yield stuff. Mm, it's still it could still blow out of proportion, considering the U.S. was thinking about that the entire time through the Cold War, and so were the Soviets. They yeah, wanted to fight a conventional war, but they still wanted to use nukes as a tactical means. Yeah. But at that point, you but see a no nuke, more you're going war. to nuke back. It's pretty much a free-for-all at this yeah. point if it's done, and it only takes one. That's what I'm looking at. Even a small one. Even if if Kim, like I said, decides to show his ass and use one in South Korea, just one, one sets, sets it off. off. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter who uses it. Mm-hmm. It's a domino effect. It could be a fucking accident. Yeah. That would do it. Trying to threaten the South Koreans by doing a nuclear test clo- semi close to the border. Well, something I'm goes wrong. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, not right on the border, but like something semi close and something goes wrong. Off well, the coast of Hawaii, yeah. You know. mm. What? How the fuck do we go from Korea to Hawaii? Well, they said they were going to send one to Hawaii or something. Oh, well, that was like several years ago. But yeah, that was so this last year. Was it? No. Yes. <laughs> when they had that missile warning on the thing, it was false. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that was last year. I kept thinking that was the year before. Who says the red signals that's over? Oh, fuck <laughs> me. Oh, well, boy. You're trapped on an island. You can't get away. Oh, North Korea. Yeah, that's almost as bad as being on an island in a tsunami. You have nowhere to fucking go. No. But yeah, nothing like living in a modern world. We're not even, we're just now. Uh, we're living in modern warfare, warfare right? Yeah. <laughs> in the oh, dude, we're we're from way of life now. But, well, all these Xbox kids, you wanted it. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> oh shit. Like, legit. We are just now cresting into one full week into the new year 2020 is now 1 8 3 45 a.m eastern standard it, time and we're call already on a dominant i send him a message saying well you played the game long enough hope you're ready for the real fucking thing there won't be any zombies involved but you know <laughs> at this point who knows what's gonna happen right now we're literally just a bunch of dominoes and we're waiting for somebody to nick that first one to where it falls and just starts the chain reaction I think it's already fallen. 